Hello, hello, my name is Joe and today I'm here with this new video about Radix. People have been wondering who is the person behind the voice in my videos. So I decided to show up. I wanted to make this video to share more of my understanding about Radix as I have read even more about it. I first came to know about Radix from the Forbes article that I read and they talked about Dan Hughes who previously helped build software behind mobile NFC payments. So then I ended up reading a lot about Radix. Their white paper is quite excellent and then I joined their community on Telegram their website presence or community everything is very high quality so I have been really enjoying being a part of it I'll leave the links in the description below just in case you want to follow them or become a part of it they were also running a program where we could make some creatives and infographics and win some EXRD tokens and I have taken part in it and I've also won some tokens well that's something else more about that some other time but let's go back to the Forbes article that I read it is a fantastic article that describes how Radix came to existence and how Dan and other developers invested about seven years developing this ground -based technology which is unlike any other thing on blockchain it is totally unlike the traditional decentralized ledger technologies in many ways in this video we are talking about some incredible features which differentiate radix from blockchain or ethereum or any such protocols so blockchain got us the ability to transfer money to each other across continents and in a decentralized trustless manner which is recorded over the web as a block ledger it's open it's safe and no one can fiddle with it and it makes transactions cost efficient however it can only do money transactions that is when ethereum comes to rescue and the concept of smart contract is witnessed now smart contract extends the power of blockchain to a different level it adds the power of programming to a transaction block hence it can help a plethora of application to reach its potential the applications could reach from supply chain to gaming voting gambling nft you name it basically whatever can be tokenized can be handled by ethereum one more critical thing ethereum did was it opened the gates for decentralized financial applications also known as DeFi. and then the crypto world went yeah now we are talking at the end of the day business is all about trade anything that can make trade fast efficient and secure will get love not only attention and that's why ethereum has been getting all the attention and love of the crypto world so far as we saw the growth of DeFi, along came applications like flash loans asset exchange and users started coupling multiple operations to get the results that they wanted however each function requires processing power which is provided by ethereum fuel called gas in my words that means more of my hard-earned money and as DeFi continued expanding on the wings of ethereum the problems or the shortcomings of Ethereum surfaced. Oil is lighter than water, as they say. Fail of game crypto kitties is just one example of how Ethereum can cause congestion. And this is when the users are just interacting with one app. But in DeFi, many apps have to interact with each other. Or let me say many DeFi apps have to interact with each other. It clearly showed that Ethereum cannot scale on demand and it cannot handle so many users and increasing gas prices will make it a sour deal box mining said on his channel that he spent $6,500 on gas prices in the last six months well whatever trading he is doing that is a freaking lot of money to pay in gas this will make the technology only favorable for the whales and small investor will not be able to participate exactly this is the reason why in the latest yield mining wave many of the small investors were not able to participate because the grass because the gas price was so high all in all there are few shortcomings of the traditional dlts low interoperability of DeFi apps they cannot scale fast and effectively high transaction costs security is still a concern because developers are trying to catch the market opportunity or market share if they spend too long in developing something they will lose the market share but if they provide us their half-baked cookie then we the users will have to bear the burn these kind of platforms are not ready for the future of DeFi. enters redix and this is why when I looked into the Radix project, I was really excited about the technology and the features it's offering. I looked into the fundamentals, their team, their past work. In all of this, Radix is ticking all the boxes. The future of DeFi apps will require sophisticated transaction where DeFi apps can communicate with other DeFi apps which might or might not be related to each other. Therefore, a need for a decentralized financial ecosystem is growing. Imagine locking in your Ether on MakerDAO platform to mint DAI and then buying wrapped Bitcoin with this DAI, all within one transaction. This interoperability is not straightforward to achieve and many technologies are not prepared for this kind of scalability or 
multiple transactions. Most of the technologies are focused on solving the crypto kitties kind of problem and they have been able to do that with the help of shards. Now shards means breaking down the bigger transactions or bigger operations into smaller operations or tasks. Well, the problem with the traditional DLTs is that all of this is happening in a sequential mode. So all the shards are operating in a sequential mode. Shards chains. <laughs> Everything is happening in a sequential mode, taking more time, more resources and hence leading to a time consuming expensive deal. Analogy time. Imagine the release of the most ultra amazing awesome movie in the theater next to you. And the theater has only 100 seats. Doesn't it sound like Ethereum's limited processing capabilities. People are going mad about watching that movie. So in the Ethereum world, people will pay more and more gas to hit the ticket window and make their transactions to buy the movie tickets. But in the Radix world, sharding is done at the smart contract level. That means making as many processes parallel as possible. Therefore, imagine the ticket seller are divided into many and they come to the buyer to sell the tickets. Parallel processing and sharding at the smart contract level. But remember that Radix also doesn't have this 100 seat limitation. Radix can grow or scale on demand. Now let's look at the second scenario. Imagine I want to buy the movie ticket but only if popcorn is also available. Yeah, some diva attitude. In the traditional DLT world, somebody will go and buy me the tickets and in a sequential process also buy me the popcorn. But imagine if he bought the ticket and the popcorn is not available, then he'll have to go back to revert that operation or task or uh, return my movie tickets basically and that would be a bummer. But the Radix world works like this. Imagine me and my friend can go in different directions. I can buy the tickets and she can buy the popcorns and we can wave to each other and signal each other at critical points telling each other that we can get successful in buying whatever we are buying. So basically, we are going in two different directions, basically two different app, dApps, <laughs> and we are able to communicate with each other. So if you wanted to say all of this in Radix terminology, that would be dApp to dApp communication and sharding and braiding at the same time. Let's take another analogy. I want to compare Ether with this cinema with 100 seats and Radix with um, Netflix, for example. In Netflix, I can watch movies in many regional languages using the same application. I can use my TV remote or my phone remote. These are two unrelated applications to still do the same related stuff. For example, controlling my Netflix. These two shots will couple to perform same or similar effects. Think about consensus and, be, and these two behave like their own new consented group performing the same act. In Netflix, I don't have to pay heavy fee for watching one movie and definitely I don't have to pay cut the queue fee call guess. Hence making it all cost effective, just like Netflix. More than one or many users can watch at the same time. Netflix enables me to get very, very fast um, rendering speed on videos and Radix has also proven 1 million transactions per second. Today, throughout the world, people are watching Netflix and the aim is also to bring Radix to the masses, to bring this technology to the masses. It's built with keeping the end user in mind. The aim is to make DeFi available for every person and every device. Radix will enable decentralized services on laser speed. On the top of it, Radix has provided mathematical proofs. Also, Radix and the University of California, UC Davis, have published a joint research paper to show the groundbreaking benefit of Cerberus's innovative approach. I would highly recommend that you read the white paper. I enjoyed it quite a lot and I'm sure you will also be able to appreciate it. This is what the future of DeFi requires. User to application scalability, dApp to dApp communication, secured and fast transactions, and also the grounds to build something new and innovative. And Radix is ticking all these boxes right. I'm very excited to take part in the incentive pool starting 17th of November. Make sure you also take some tokens and buy some tokens while the price is still low. I have also come to know that their public sale ended much earlier because they reached the target funding level earlier than expected. So let's be ready to make some financial gains as well as witness the power of this great technology which gives crypto projects a completely new tool set to play with. And also see how Radix will redefine the future of DeFi. Thank you for watching this video. Ciao till next time.